Hello everyone and welcome back to Radiant Moon Tarot. My name is Victoria. Today we are here talking about the solar eclipse in the sign of Aries. This is occurring on the 8th of April of 2024. Hold on to your hats here folks. This is a big one. Number one, the solar eclipse itself is always a very spectacular, if you can see it, um, as a astronomical event, right? It's like we can, it's like the fire in the sky kind of energy. Um, way back in you know before they understood astrology way back in medieval times and things they you know whenever there was an eclipse it was like the end of the world right the end of times of course we uh, don't look at it quite that way these days although eclipses can be very unpredictable and they can bring things out of the woodwork expect the unexpected whenever we do have eclipse energy because pretty much anything goes we can have endings, we can have new beginnings, we can have surprises, we can have joyous occasions and joyous things that come out of nowhere. We can also have things coming out of the woodwork. And uh, so things that have been forgotten about or things that maybe someone neglected, if you think of your workplace, maybe something comes up from two years ago that some old employee never took, uh, never took care of properly and now here it is, somehow you have to deal with it. So things like that can very much come up um, at a eclipses. The uh, eclipses can also bring about faded events and just things that are kind of meant to happen or things that kind of put you right back on your destined path. Now, this particular one, this is going to happen on April 8th of 2024. Um, Pacific Standard Time is 11.20 a.m. is when that full effect of that eclipse is. 2.20 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, Eastern Time, okay. Um, but check your clocks, check your calendar, check, uh, you know, NASA or something like that to see where, um, where and when yours is going to be visible the most. Make sure that you do view eclipses with a little bit of safety in mind, though, um, because we don't want to burn your retinas out or anything like that. Make sure you do have proper glasses um, to watch it. Now, new moons themselves bring new beginnings. <clears throat> a solar eclipse is like a new moon on steroids. So there could be a new beginning somewhere in your life coming about because of this eclipse. Now, this eclipse tra does trigger um, a whole cycle. Normally, this cycle does end in about six months because it usually culminates with the full moon in Aries, um, usually in October, right, is when we have the next eclipse season. This one's a little strange um, because we actually don't get another full moon in the sign of Aries until the spring because the, uh, the eclipse in October of 2024 is actually going to be in Pisces. So very interesting kind of energy there. So this is a long drawn out um, new beginning event, which can actually give you some more time to, you know, get things done or get things started or, or start to see some progress. This is also conjunct Chiron. Chiron is known as the wounded healer. So this is a perfect time to heal old wounds, whether they're personal, emotional, um, whether it's something in your career, something in your relationships, right? So this can help us heal some um, insecurities, some fears, right? And uh, so it's a huge opportunity for healing and having a fresh start. So it is really quite exciting. This is also occurring, there's a lot going on, there's also occurring at the time of a Mercury retrograde. Retrogrades are time to take a step back, reflect, regroup, renew, reassess, and reevaluate things in our lives. It can also be a time where we can gain some clarity and insights because we are having a look back at something or we are double checking something over. Um, we can get uh, the answers that we've been looking for and sometimes we can have a second chance at something here, whether it's a second chance to start something new or a second chance to heal something and release it and let it go. This eclipse is happening at 19 degrees. If you know your astrological birth chart and if you have any personal planets between 17 and 21 degrees, you're going to feel this the most, but have no fear. This is going to impact us all. Reflect back to the solar eclipse that we had in 2023. There may be some things that have played out for you, or maybe there's something that you've forgotten about and you're like, you know what, I'm going to try this again. I'm going to give myself a second chance 
to start something fresh or to kind of turn over a new page, turn over a new leaf. Um, that was a doozy of an eclipse last year, of course, because we also had a square to Pluto, right? So that was a, whoo, man, that was a tricky one, that one. Um, and it really did kickstart a lot of massive changes. I know that I had a lot of massive changes last year, especially through the summer when uh, Venus went retrograde in the sign of Leo. That was not a good time. Um, so, you know, this can be where some things have kind of played out for you, or there may be some still some things going on. But this is going to be a very interesting one as well. A couple of days after this eclipse, okay, on April 11th, we have a Mercury Kazemi. So a Kazemi is, the word Kazemi means in the heart of the sun. This is where we can get a mental breakthrough. Um, new visions of the future. This is where we can plant new seeds of intentions. Um, fresh truths may be revealed. And this can actually bring you some good luck. So the Kazemi can actually be a really good time to set intentions to manifest some things into your life. But whatever your situation is, um, this is going to be a fiery eclipse. It's going to be intense, um, but it's very closely linked with the sun. So it can be very creative, uh, very um, energetic. You, can, you know, if you've been feeling stuck in a rut, this might be where you get the energy boost you need to get things started and uh, to uh, really get some action going, right? Follow your passion, your goals, your dreams. Um, you might be filled with a little bit more positivity than you were previously. And it's not that we don't have some bumpy astrology coming in as well because we do but this is probably going to give you a little bit more of a positive vibe to overcome things or to make those little changes that you want to make so having said that let's get into your cards and let's pull out cards for your sign so Aries, we have a, this solar eclipse happening in your first astrological house, of course, because it's in your sign. And your first house has to do with your approach to life, your identity, um, your attitude, uh, your personality, how you look, how you feel. So you could be really focused on your, your personal self, your personal goals. Some of you might be trying out a new wardrobe, a new haircut. Um, perhaps you're having a look at how you deal with interactions, deal with situations in your life. And you might be thinking to yourself, you know what, if I do this a little bit differently, or if I, you know, really try and focus on, you know, doing this in a certain way, rather than my old ways of doing things, this can really highlight some wonderful things for you, right? So all kinds of new things, new beginnings coming in on you. But we also do have that healing element coming in with Chiron, and so this can be where you heal some aspect of yourself. Now, whether you just spend some time um, on your own at this eclipse and just meditate and contemplate, focus on your goals for your future, um, you could be really focusing on banishing some old energies, cleansing and purging so that you can really feel like you have a lighter load going forward into the future. You could be addressing some old fears and insecurities about yourself. And so work with the energy of Chiron here because this can really help you. So the first card we have coming out is we actually have full moon energy coming in here with Aquarian vibe. Be real. So this can be really where you do engage with yourself and you're really honest and truthful with yourself. Where have I been? What have I done? What mistakes have I made? What have I learned from them? And how am I going to do things differently in the future? You're getting real with yourself, down and dirty. You're facing those honest truths. Full moon energy is about releasing, cleansing, purging, letting things go, um, understanding the cycles that you've been through and um, understanding those life lessons. But it's also about be honest with yourself. What is your vision for the future? What do you want to manifest in your life? What do you want to do a little bit differently than you have been previously? Just be honest with yourself. Aquarian energy is about freeing yourself from your past and facing your future. The Aquarian energy is very futuristic, um, always looking um, to see how we can do things a little bit better or a little bit differently than we have been. 
We also have coming for you, we've got The Magician. I love that we've got this coming out for you. That is so awesome. We have The High Priestess here as well. Wow, whole shebang there. And we've got The Page of Pentacles. And would you look at that? So this, this new moon is bringing you... Um, your personal power, the magician is about you, your power to create, to manifest things in your life, to find the resources that you need to get things done. The high priestess shows that you could very much have some sort of an epiphany or a revelation around this eclipse. And I mentioned the Kazemi before, which is occurring on the 11th. Um, which is still very much in the eclipse energy. It lasts for a few days before, a few days after, right? But it really does kickstart a cycle. And so you could be really getting some uh, spiritual downloads. You could be having a massive epiphany um, at some at some point between the Kazemi and uh, the eclipse. But I feel that you're just very, very feeling, very much feeling the connection with this moon. You could have some secrets revealed or you might reveal something to the world around you. Because the high priestess, very wise, keeper of secrets and mysteries. So whether something comes to light for you that is previously been hidden or whether you are coming clean you're getting real with yourself but also maybe with other people this can be very exciting very much trust your intuition but your power to manifest here is absolutely incredible so don't doubt yourself now we do have the page of pentacles here for you guys okay so yes there could be some information that is coming in here for you or you discover something that can really help you to bring you some riches and gold and new beginnings and improvements in your life. The Page of Pentacles can represent that there might be a um, very important um, message, invitation, or opportunity that you're opening the door to at this time as well. You could also be spending some money with the Page of Pentacles. You could be some, spending some money on yourself, a new haircut, a new wardrobe, a um, pair of new shoes perhaps that you wanted or been saving up for, um, or perhaps you do something even better for yourself and you pay for, um, for yourself to learn something, whether it's a creative endeavor or whether it's something that will help you make some money. And this can be some money very well spent for you here, Aries. So really quite exciting with that page of pentacles. This can bring in some growth, fresh energy, new approach, new beginnings for you. So let's grab a couple of more cards out here for you guys. Thank you very much. And we have, there you go, this is going to be super hard for you to see, but we've got what looks like a new moon. We see that very faint sliver of light, and we see a shadow of a person sitting right there looking at it. This could also be a dark moon. Um, I see, I seek truth and act upon my realizations. And what did we say? Be real, be truthful, be honest. If you seek some answers, seek and you shall find. Okay, at this eclipse. And our next message, breathe. Inhale stardust and exhale magic. All right, take a little bit of time to really connect with this energy, with this eclipse. It is your sign. It is going to have an impact on you. And this could really help propel you forward in a very positive and perhaps even magical way. I'll leave that there for you, Aries. I hope there was something here for you. If so, please do hit that like button as well um, and is, hit the subscribe button. Thank you um, if you enjoy my content. But don't be afraid to start a conversation. Say hello down below. How are these eclipses affecting you? What do you want to start? What are you changing? Or uh, what kind of surprise is headed your way? Um, it's always nice to have a conversation down below. So I thank you guys for watching. Have a beautiful eclipse and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Taurus, let's have a look and see what we've got coming here for you guys. This is going to be happening in your 12th astrological house. So this is, of course, the final house in astrology. So you could be um, really getting some closure on something. You could also possibly even have something come to fruition for you at this time. But the 12th house is very spiritual, very mystical, magical. Um, this does have to do with karmic debts 
So you could be having a fresh start because you finished a karmic cycle in your life. And this can be really exciting for you. Um, this You might find that your sleep cycles are a little bit disrupted at this eclipse because your 12th house, it's where we sleep. Okay, um, You might be having some wild and crazy dreams at this time. But you may feel as though you want to escape from the world a little bit around this eclipse. So make sure that you honor um, your feelings to do that and to spend some time to connect with this energy, uh, to breathe something out, right? Relieve stress, anxieties, um, fears, that kind of thing. So spending a little bit of time in quiet solitude can really serve you well at this time. Um, but the 12th house has to do with what's hidden, uh, secrets, dreams, things like that. So if you've been doing anything behind the scenes that you haven't told anyone about, this might be where you reveal something. This can also represent where there might be a revelation made to you. So whether you're discovering some sort of hidden information or some secret or whether someone volunteers that to you, it can be very interesting. So keep your eyes and ears peeled for that. Um, we have the full moon and Capricorn energy take a reality check. All right. So we are getting um, a little bit of full moon energy that's coming in here. So it's really not surprising, right? Because eclipses do travel in pairs. They happen every six months. And we have the full moon eclipse, which we had um, just on March 25th. And now we're in the new moon energy with this um, with this solar eclipse. And the energy doesn't just start and stop in a day. It does carry through. So with the full moon energy, again, this is like a completion of something, a completion of a cycle um, in some way with Capricorn ruled by Saturn. It can be some life lesson and probably something really challenging there for you, but you're cleansing it, you're purging it, you're releasing it. And so a full moon energy there with the 12th house, right? Big endings are possible possibility for you, but they free you up and they set the week in motion for an exciting new beginning. Now, can we have something really uh, come to the forefront for you at this time? Yes, we can. Um, 12th house does have to deal with endings of all kinds. And so if there's been something that you've been thinking of putting an end to, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a job, um, a habit, something that you do, Saturn can have to, Saturn energy can carry forward um, some of our habits, right? Um, then this is a time when you're going to really get a helping hand from the universe. It's almost like the universe is grabbing you by the elbow and say, come on, let's move forward. This is not working anymore. Let's get, let's get at her. And uh, so this could really be a boost for you. It's a not, might not necessarily be super easy, but you could also be getting clarity on what you do need to, um, what you do need to put an end to or what's been holding you back. So again, spending some quiet time alone uh, to meditate, to contemplate, to connect with yourself and to really kind of, you know, figure out where do I want to go from here and what do I want to leave behind? So we also have here for you the Three of Swords, which is actually excellent, believe it or not. Um, I'll tell you why in a minute. We've got the Two of Wands and we have the Three of Wands. Look at that making progress with that energy. So the Three of Swords, like I said, with this particular solar eclipse, we do have the healing element of Chiron. The um, 12th house energy is where we can find those healing um, energies, right? Where we can release, let go. So in this three of swords, I feel like here you're really going to connect with your heart space, with your emotions, with your thoughts, and you are going to discover something that needs to be dealt with. And you are going to welcome in that healing energy of Chiron. And what this does with the two of wands and the three of wands, what this does here is this um, releases you. It clears your path forward. The two of wands, does it look like there's anything blocking? 
No, but this is also giving you some deeper insights into where you want to go for the future because the two of wands is about choosing a path. Which direction do I want to go in? What's going to make me happy? What's going to bring me, um, you know, uh, uh, success or whatever is your main motivation, right? So I feel like there you're going to be figuring that out. Sorry, I have a, my cat just jumped up onto uh, jumped up onto my table. But with the three of wands, it's like you're ready for action. You're ready to move forward. You're ready to make a choice. And so in this energy, you're not just sitting back. You're actually taking initiative to follow a goal, to follow a dream and um, to have a better tomorrow. So this can actually be really exciting for you. Thank you, comment. You just ruined my whole table. I'm going to have to fix that. Um, if you didn't see him on the screen, he is my lucky little black cat. So he's only six months old, um, but he is a wonderful little treasure. So we have Inspire here for you. And so, ouch, uh, there's a fire inside you burning brighter than the sun. All right, what is your passion? What is your goal? Where does this three of wands take you? Because this is about making bold moves into the future. So you're very much encouraged to follow your passion and your desires. We also have here, accept that here now is exactly where I am. And that is it a place that it is a place of profound learning. So again, just like we have the Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn, is that you may get some deeper understanding of some sort of life lesson that you've learned, some experience that you've gone through, and you're maybe going to understand why, or you're going to figure out what you've learned, and you'll take this wisdom with you into the future. That's what I have for you, Taurus. I'm going to leave that there. I hope there was something here for you. If so, please do hit that like button there. Subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content. But don't be afraid to leave a comment down below as well. How are these eclipses playing out for you? How are you feeling? How are you navigating these energies? We're all in this together, people, and we can learn from each other. So I thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. So Gemini, you're going to be experiencing this eclipse in your 11th astrological house. Now this can be kind of a fun place to have a new beginning, to have a new moon. Um, the 11th house has to do with your wishes, with your dreams, all right? So maybe something that you're wishing for can come to fruition at this time. It's also a good time to make a wish, um, maybe around the time of the Kazemi, two days later, um, or three days later, I should say. Uh, so this could be a great time for you. You could be meeting new people. You could be finding that you're feeling a little bit more social at this time. You could also be um, making some changes into your social obligations, into who you spend time with. And uh, so this can, you know, be just a really, um, a really good time for you to get out there um, to meet new people. But you could also have this energy here of healing friendships, okay, or um, getting something back on track. And so maybe if there's, um, of course, remember eclipses can bring unexpected happenings. So if maybe there's someone that you haven't talked to for a long time and maybe you've just lost touch or you've been really busy, um, or maybe you haven't seen someone for a very long time, this can be where they come back into your life. And so the 11th house has to do with giving back to people as well, giving back to humanity in some way. So you could be really embarking on a journey here to help others to give back to your community to maybe help some neighbors or help friends so it can be a very helpful energy but you could also have some help coming to you so let's see what we've got for you guys where are we we have Pisces energy here, talk less and feel more. Okay, now <laughs> that's super interesting. The 11th house can be quite chatty, right? Very social, very getting yourself out there. Um, but talk less, feel more. This can really um, represent, you know, instead of talking about something, right, is to engage in your emotions, to engage in your feelings and do something, right? Aries energy is all about doing something. So perhaps you've been talking about volunteering for a while. Well, tap into your emotions. Is that really what you want to do? Or is it, you know, maybe just you're saying it because it's like the right thing to say? What do you feel would be good for you and right for you to give back or to help other people or to connect in a different way? This also does have to uh, deal with, you know, chit chat, chatter. 
All right. And sometimes, you know, uh, Gemini, you do tend to be quite chatty and sociable and personable and all that kind of stuff. But the universe is really trying to get you to think about something here and say, do you talk for the sake of talking or are you listening? Are you too much in your head and not enough in your heart? Right. It's very easy to sit there and, you know, mask our feelings per se by, you know, engaging in conversation. But maybe it's like that chit chatty conversation that doesn't necessarily have any deep feelings and emotion behind it. So perhaps part of the energy coming in here for this um, moon for you can be a different way of communicating. So you could be changing your communication style and you could also be really kind of um, connecting with your feelings in a way that you might be reassessing your um, social connections and your relationships and saying, okay, well, you know, am I just hanging out with these people or connected with the social group just because you know, just because I, you know, it's like habit, right? Like I've been connected for a long time or what, how do I feel about where I'm connecting, where I'm spending my time, who I'm talking to. And so this can be where you get some deep insights and revelations for yourself here, right? It's like, you know, I think I'm just going through the motions and I'm just, I don't feel necessarily like if I was to walk away from this group, I don't feel any sense of loss. Well, that can be um, a really good indicator, perhaps that maybe there's something a little bit better out there and the universe is propelling you in that direction. So very interesting energy, but whatever it is out of your head and into your heart a little bit more, our heart space is where we have love and friendship, kindness, compassion. Um, this is also where we can engage in some healing energy as well. It's also our source of creativity, right? That heart heart space that's the power that's the beat the heartbeat of everything so connect with that we've got the two of wands here for you the four of swords and judgment so I do feel here that you are going to be gaining some clarity about something. So you're looking out to the future. You're trying to make a choice with the two of wands. Which direction do I want to go in? What path do I want to lead? Do I have time for everything? Do I need to let something go? Do I need to divert my attention, my interest? Right? Do I need to split off from the herd? Right? The two of wands shows that there might be some contemplative energy coming in here, but your path forward is clear, whatever your situation happens to be. We do have the four of wands here, which does give you peace, inner peace peace, outer peace, peace of mind, right? But this is also a card of meditation. So at this moon, you're being very much guided to spend some time in a quiet space. Again, talk less, feel more, right? So um, out of your head and into your heart, connect with your energy. Because when we get the judgment card here, Okay, there could be some major revelation for you here. You could be gaining clarity and insight on things from your past, on things from your present, and things that are going to carry you forward into your future. So a big decision, a big judgment, if you will. Now, the judgment card also can bring things that are hidden to light, to the forefront. So you could discover something about yourself. You could discover something about other people. You could have a surprise coming your way, or you could just be dealing with something, some energies maybe that are unseen. The judgment card can also bring in an energy of um, forgiveness and healing and possibly even second chances. And we've got a lot of second chance energy going on here as well, right? So this can be giving yourself a second chance, giving yourself a break. This can be with a person. This can bring with, be with an endeavor, uh, whatever it happens to be. The choice, my friends, here is yours. The judgment card does bring out a big cleanse and purge to prepare you for your next stage of your journey. We have eternity here. Give yourself permission to slow down. It's a big message here for you, Gemini. All right. Um, the universe is really trying to get you to just to kind of dial things back just a little bit. And <clears throat> you you do like to put yourself out there. And maybe sometimes you spread yourself a little bit too thin. But remember, we're in retrograde season right now. We've got Mercury retrograde. And this is a big energy by itself to step back, to reflect, refocus, regroup, renew, reassess, reevaluate, 
right? All of the re energies come in there and the universe is really giving you this message. So I think there's some major epiphany that you're about to have. There's some sort of clarity that you are about to gain some insights that you're about to understand. But in order to hear it, in order to see it, in order to recognize it and connect with it, you've got to take that step back and slow down. Because this can have something to do with your wishes, your goals, your dreams. And if we don't slow down a little bit and open our eyes and expand our awareness of things, sometimes we miss things. And it's not that something that's, you know, anything that's truly meant for you will never pass you by, but we may have to wait a while for it to come back around again. And we don't like to wait, do we? No, we want magic here and now. There's your final message. I enjoy the serendipity of life. The unexpected can be wonderful. Uh-huh. Take that to the bank. All right. I'll leave that there for you, Gemini. You can chew on that. Uh, I hope there was something here for you. If so, please do hit that like button free for you. But it really does have an impact for me and my channel and my videos. So I thank you very much. If you enjoy my content, uh, hit that subscribe button as well. But don't be afraid to leave a comment down below. Well, how are these eclipse energies working out for you? What are you going through? Um, if you have some sort of surprise, what is it? Is it something exciting? Let's hope so, because that 11th house energy can be very exciting. So, But I thank you for watching. I hope you have a fantastic eclipse, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye. So Cancer, you are going to be experiencing this solar eclipse in your 10th house. Now, this can be really sparkly for you guys. The 10th house can really have some significant impact or changes on your public image, how people see you, um, on your career. You could be um, really gearing up here for like something like a better paying job, right? It's really great for your career status. Um, this can be where your reputation may precede you. You're building a good reputation here in this energy. So it can be very exciting, but you may get some rewards or new beginnings or some improvements because of how people see you, because of um, the hard work and dedication that you've put forward. So this can be a really good time for you where some doors are opening to find a new job, a better paying job. You could even have an opportunity opening up for you to and do something like spearhead a project or do some problem solving uh, around your workplace or something. And then, you know, maybe your boss is like, you know what, you're really good at that. And, you know, I think we need to um, really embrace your talents in a in a better or a different way. Um, or if, you know, perhaps this is a great time for you to revamp your resume and put those things on there yourself. But the 10th house does speak to your ambition and your goals. So this can be a perfect time for you to set the ball in motion to make some changes in your life, especially with your career, with your money, um, and to do something. The 10th house does bring us fame and it can possibly bring us fortune. So uh, really embrace that energy in the best of ways. All right. So believe in yourself, essentially, with this energy. Be a little bit of magic in the air for you. So the first card that we've got out here for you, we've got work through your feelings and we've got Aries energy shining through. So this can be incredibly sparkly for you guys. Um, this is about really connecting with yourself. What do I want? Where does my ambition lie? Where do I feel as though I can make the best and most significant improvements in my life right now? Where do I want to have fun? What do I want to create? Right. So really take that step back. Right. Remember, we've got Mercury retrograde. So take that step back right before springing into action. So we really want to connect with ourselves. Right. And really be honest with ourselves. What do I want? Where do I want to go? What works for me right now? What doesn't work for me right now? And this is a perfect time to fly high, to break free out of the norm and to follow those passions, whatever they are, even if it's for something fun. Right. Even if it's just for something where, you know, you're not looking for fame or fortune or money, you just there's something that you're really excited about trying or doing. And this can be that little bit of an energy boost for you to uh, get started. We have the seven of cups get started rather than procrastinating is actually what I was about to say. But anyway, we've got the king of cups there as well. 
and we have the star. Now the star is in reverse, okay? So we'll talk about that one there. Um, but the seven of cups here is about your imagination, your dreams. Um, this is also saying that you have a lot of options out there. And so sometimes we can really, um, in, with the seven of cups, be opening the door to a lot of possibilities. And we do need to be a little bit uh, careful because sometimes in this energy, we can start to feel a little bit overwhelmed or confused. And then we can get ourselves going around in circles and talking ourselves out of something or we can be, uh, you know, really kind of um, keeping ourselves stuck because of fear, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of change. Right. So in that seven of cups energy, we want to make sure that whatever we're dreaming about, whatever we're imagining, wherever we envision ourselves going in the future, we need king of cups energy. We need to be confident in ourselves. The king of cups is all the kings are masters of something. They're all successful and they all take the lead in things here as well. So grab the bull by the horns, just like that Aries energy. It's like, this is what I want to create. I can dream it. I can envision it. I can see it. Well, now is the time to spring into action, to take that leap forward that you need. The King of Cups is about engaging with your heart space, engaging with your feelings. Hey, we have already see that there, all right? But when we do engage with our feelings, when we do connect with our heart, we can open ourselves up to new experiences, new people. We can also um, heal whatever has been holding us back. So you could get some sort of realization as to why maybe you always feel as though you're going around in circles or why does it always take me so long to make a decision? Okay, so there, your heart is trying to tell you something at this time. But I feel with the star in reverse here for you, I feel like there's something trying to come through for you, some blessings, some dreams, some goals, some desires, um, but some change. And there could be here a lack of confidence. There could also be some impatience here, but there could also be an element of uncertainty because the 10th house does have to do with, you know, the things that you want. But we sometimes need to, King of Cups, believe that we can get what it is that we want. And so with the star in reverse there, it feels like, you know, the universe is really saying to you that the stars are trying to align for you, right? The universe is trying to bring you something in, something bright and sparkly. But sometimes if we're in the Seven of Cups energy, we aren't clear about what it is we want. So the universe can't possibly bring you what you desire or help you out as much as it's trying to if you're always going around in circles or if you're not sure or if you're not open to something new. So the star is saying that there's changes trying to come in. There's wonderful energies trying to come in. There's healing trying to come in for you, right? Things are trying to align for you. We need to be open. We need to be patient. But we also really need to be true and honest with ourselves and really attach some positive emotion to what it is we want. Remember, work through our feelings. So if you're feeling overwhelmed and distressed, one of the best things that we can do is um, take a few moments, engage with our energy, meditate, find a quiet space, a quiet room, go connect with nature. Um, whatever works for you where we clear our heads and we allow the energy to flow because the star energy is bringing you beautiful energy or is at least trying to bring you some calm and hope and peace and serendipity and blessings and miracles and all kinds of wonderful things. But something is blocking it. And I feel like this is seven of cups. Now, the star energy can trump that, right? Heavier energy, bigger energy than this. But sometimes we can be um, the mastermind of our own good fortune. Right. But we can also create our own blocks and obstacles. So you have the power to get that energy flowing in a very positive way. Again, to reassess, reevaluate, get yourself back on track and allow all this wonderful, exciting energy to flow in. This can also represent in order to um, find what it is that you're looking for. You need to embrace change and you need to be willing to let something go and create a little bit of disruption in your life because cancer, maybe you are 
um, a person that likes peace and calm and serendipity, but this is not how we always get growth. Sometimes we do need to shake things up a little bit. We do need to step out of our comfort zone. And so we need to be willing to change, willing to change things, change situations and release old situations um, so that we can find something a little bit better. There's another message for you. I am open and responsive to the abundance of the universe. You see, the star is trying to bring you something because the star brings abundance and blessings, so all kinds of wonderful things, but we need to be open to it, all right? We also have limitless, know your worth, all right? Unlimited abundance and possibilities coming to you, and we have phases. Shine even when you're not whole, all right? We are all sometimes trying to pick up some pieces. We are all sometimes feeling as though there's something missing. Shine anyway. You do you. Know your worth. Know who you are. Know what you want. And be open and go for it. I'll leave all that there for you guys. I hope there was something here for you. If so, please do hit that like button. Truly appreciate that. Um, and if you enjoy my content, hit that subscribe button as well. But let us know in the comments how these eclipses are working out for you. What's going on? What's changing? What new are you trying to bring in? Um, always very interesting. And uh, we're all in this together. So it's always great to share our experiences. But I thank you for watching and I will see you guys later. Bye bye. So Leo, this eclipse is happening in your ninth astrological house. So this is ruled by Jupiter. So you could actually be gaining something at this new moon. Um, you could be gaining some information, some insight, some wisdom, some deeper understanding. You could also be um, gaining some opportunities here as well. The ninth house has to do with your spiritual self, your belief system. So you could be changing something there um, or even uh, engaging in some new spiritual or religious practice. This does have to do with your higher mind, your philosophical outlook on life, um, your morals, ethics, big ideas. You could have some big ideas at this moment and figuring out how to turn your big ideas into reality. Um, this also does deal with the law. So there could be something legal. Um, it can be something new that comes in so maybe you take out a loan or something or perhaps with law you can get some contracts at this time perhaps as well or you're getting a fresh start because you're paying something off and you're being released from some sort of legal obligation there the ninth house can have to do with travel to foreign lands and um, possibly also connecting with people from a foreign land so some of you could have a visitor from overseas or from a long distance away or you could could be making some travel plans at this time, especially if you've been having a little bit of cabin fever um, and you're like, I need to spread my wings and fly because Jupiter energy does bring us expansion and growth and some good fortune. And so this can be really exciting for you. Um, you could also be fixing something at this time and especially um, in regards to your belief systems. All right, because the ninth house does have to do with your spiritual self and also with like traditional religion. And so there could be something here that you're working through, something that you're, rec you're reconciling. And remember, we do have this Chiron energy bringing you healing. And so sometimes we heal by finding common ground or by finding a compromise. And, you know, sometimes we do um, in our human experience, uh, really focus on absolutes like it has to be this way or this way why can things come together right and I know people that are on their spiritual path or engaging with spiritual realms but they're also have their traditional religious faith and they've found a way that works for them okay to blend the two together so it's not impossible it doesn't have to be black or white, either or. It doesn't have to be this way or that way or no way, right? We can find those ways where everything can live in symbiotic harmony. Now, some things don't work together, right? Some things really don't, okay? But this can be where you're maybe examining your belief systems and trying to blend, trying to reconcile some things, trying to get some things back on track and figure out what works for you and what doesn't. 
we have reflect on your priorities. So we've got some Aquarian energy here for you. So this is a very deep thinking and a very forward thinking energy here when we get this. Aquarian energy is, I mean, we've got Pluto in Aquarius right now. So there's been a lot of big changes for a lot of people. We've been taking back our power. We've been doing some shadow work. And but with that Aquarian energy, we're very much looking out into the horizon. We're looking out into the future. What is important to you? Reflect on the important things in your life, right? What do you want to keep? What needs to change? What needs to go? So this can be a very reflective kind of philosophical, if you will, eclipse for you, right? Where you are looking at the big picture and the big ideas. And that's that Jupiter energy, right? That expansion, that growth, that sense of wonder, that sense of awe. So you could be having a massive epiphany at this time, okay? Or maybe you just get this massive spark of inspiration, right? And this can really propel you forward into doing something very interesting. Whatever it is, reflect on your priorities, what is helping you move forward and what is holding you back because Aquarian energy does not like to be held back. Aquarian loves freedom, freedom to change, freedom to believe, freedom to follow goals, freedom to live life my way kind of thing. So embrace that Aquarian vibe. All right. We have three of pentacles here. Eight of wands. There's that travel energy perhaps. And we have the Knight of Pentacles. So you could be really moving forward with something that you want to create. The Three of Pentacles does bring in an energy of creation. Creating something, paying attention to detail, and seeing something come together. So it's like you've been working on something here, <clears throat> excuse me, in this energy. <clears throat> and you're moving forward. So you're making progress. All right. And this brings you to something a little bit better, or this is where you can see something through to the finish line. The Three of Pentacles can represent teamwork and collaboration as well. So perhaps there's um, you might engage in new projects, new endeavors that involve other people. Someone may help you at this time, but you could also be learning something at this time because the three of pentacles teamwork collaboration creation all these kind of things but it does have an element of either you being a person that is teaching or guiding or leading other people or you are the one seeking out the wisdom seeking out the guidance seeking out the advice being the one that is being led so there is this element, and sometimes we can learn and teach and guide each other a little bit back and forth. So you could be, um, you know, embracing your opportunities to step into a leadership role in some way. Um, you could be learning something about yourself, about the world around you. If you're looking for information, you may find it. Um, but I also do think that some of you do have some people involved here. So with travel, with the Eight of Wands, the Eight of Wands can represent some really good news coming in for you, especially with the Knight of Pentacles. So you could be getting some really great information at this time. You could also be um, purchasing something or you could get that um, offer or opportunity. The Knight of Pentacles can represent some money or some resources coming in for you. It can represent uh, a job, um, an increase in pay, that kind of thing but it's something that you've been working towards, something that you have created. So it's like not just um, a little bit of luck, a little bit of luck could be on your side, um, but it's something that you deserve, right? So, and again, where the ninth house has to do with law or legal things, this can be a job offer, a contract. This can be you having a fresh start paying off a loan, or maybe you are taking out a loan. You could also have some really good news on a legal situation if you've had anything with a third party with some other people could be something that gets mediated for you at this time but the knight of pentacles could certainly be something coming in here for you whether it is money opportunities or maybe it is some information but the eight of wands right in the middle speedy quick energy here this is forward momentum this is overcoming obstacles releasing things okay moving speedily towards the future not letting anything stand in your way it does come with a busy element to it right but also kind of very fiery right so so this is a great energy here for this eclipse. Um, but the Eight of Wands can have to do with manifestation and travel as well. But yes, typically some very good news or some positive communication can come in there with that. So we like that energy for you. 
And here is, here is your next card. And look, we have a little lion on there. All right. I am courageous and powerful. All right. What do you want to try? What do you want to change? What do you want to embrace? What do you want to create? Right. You may need to step out of your comfort zone and embrace your inner lion there. There is your next card. And we have trust. The light in you cannot be dimmed. All right. Let your light shine. That's what I have for you guys. I hope there was something here for you. If so, please do hit that like button. It does help my channel. It's free for you, though. Just hit the thumbs up. If you enjoy my content, uh, subscribe to my channel as well. If you hit the notification bell, you should, in theory, always get notified when I put up something new. And don't be afraid to start a conversation or join a conversation in the comment section as well. How are these eclipses playing out for you? A lot of unexpected events going on, and we are all in this together. All right, so, but I thank you for watching. I hope you have a great eclipse, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. So with you, Virgo, this is occurring in your eighth astrological house. Now, this is ruled by Pluto, okay? Um, so you could be doing a little bit of shadow work with this eclipse, all right? Something in the shadows could come to light. Uh, you could be doing and engaging in a huge dose of healing at this time, which is not a bad thing. Because this does lighten your energetic, emotional burden going forward, right? So sometimes we all have to do the down and dirty and we've got to do our shadow work. The eighth house deals with births and deaths, endings, new beginnings, transformation. Um, this can have to do with your shared assets and resources with other people. So there could be something shifting for you here um, if you do share any money or anything like that, part business partnerships romantic partnerships, family partnerships, right? Um, so if you share money or resources in any way, there could be something um, changing here for you. There could be something possibly coming to an end. If things have been bumpy, you could be fixing that right now. Um, but you could also be joining forces with someone new as well. And this can actually be really exciting for you um, because you could have some relationship changes here for yourself. So if you are in a romantic partnership, perhaps something goes next level and uh, you move in together, right? And so this can actually give you some financial relief because maybe now there's two people paying the bills and all of a sudden it feels like you've got a windfall because you have half the expenses than you had before. Um, you could be entering into new business partnerships. So you could be going into business with somebody um, or even experiencing some changes with your job, your career path. You could be getting more money. Um, there could be something that is just changing in some very interesting ways. The eighth house also has to deal with loans. So you could be taking out a loan or paying off a loan at this time. This can give you some freedom. But this does also deal with mysteries, the things that are hidden. So you could have some sort of mystery that does reveal itself. Now, this can be um, exciting. All right. Some secret comes to light or someone has a surprise for you. So surprise engagement, that kind of thing. That can be really great. Surprise bonus at work that you weren't expecting. That can be even better. Um, but sometimes the things that are hidden, uh, sometimes they're not always the easiest thing to deal with, especially with joint resources in your eighth house. So this is where, you know, we could get a little bit of a snafu coming in if you're maybe going to move in with someone or if you're already living with somebody and then they reveal something to you about their financial status. It can be really positive. Maybe they have more money than you thought they did. But it can also be things that are hidden like student loans or credit card debt, things like that, things that might give you a little bit of a setback, but things that now they're out in the open, you can deal with the damn things, right? They're not just festering away behind the scenes. Some of you might be feeling a little saucy at this time, I do have to say, um, because the, uh, you know, we are in Aries season, full of passion, full of fire, okay, and the eighth house can have to do with um, hidden fantasies, all right, so some of you could be talking to a partner about some of your fantasies in your private space, you're going to have to read through the, read between the lines on that one, so I don't get demonetized or something stupid like that, um, but uh, think about your, you know, physical activity, intimate partnerships with another person, you could be, uh, you know, revealing some sort of fantasy or they could be to you. So 
we have find a balance in here and we've got Libra and energy coming in. So Libra and energy does have to deal with the, with legalities, but it also has to do with responsibilities and partnerships. And the lunar eclipse that we had on the 25th of March was in the sign of Libra. So this can still be playing out for you where you're trying to balance out some partnerships. Some of you are partnering up with new people. Perhaps there is a letting go of something and you're still trying to navigate the after effects of that because let's face it the eighth house does have to do with change and transformation endings new beginnings that kind of thing um and so uh you could be dealing with some after effects of that but find the balance um it's important to find balance in our lives balance between work and home balance between um our responsibilities if we live with someone right the chores or um with your money that kind of thing um balance between our physical self and our spiritual self so find when we find that sweet spot when we find the balance in our lives things become a little bit easier things are um not as scary and things become more fruitful right and we just feel a little bit more calm and at peace so have a look at your life here in this energy and what needs to change what needs to transform so that you can have a little bit more balance in your life we have the Ten of Swords, ouch, Nine of Pentacles, well that's excellent, and we have the Page of Wands. So some of you do have something really exciting happening for you at this time. The Ten of Swords, yes, can represent the end of a difficult or challenging cycle, okay, and it's a new beginning on the horizon for you there. It's like we're sweeping away the old, we're embracing the new, and the Nine of Pentacles, well, hello, the Nine of Pentacles is an energy of success and abundance, taming your fears and anxieties and worries, but you're sitting in the lap of luxury, so you're feeling flush, you're feeling good, you're feeling like you want to treat yourself or you can afford to treat yourself to something here and with the page of wands you could have some really exciting news coming in here for you so this can certainly speak to um, business endeavors financial endeavors um, romantic endeavors here as well right so we're finished with a difficult challenging cycle we've got fresh energy coming in maybe you need to make an important decision some of you here as well seeking out some independence right because the ten of swords can be one of those things where this is a really hard decision to make. Um, you know, it's very painful. It's very challenging, but we're at the end of the road. And with the nine of pentacles can be a very independent energy, right? This can be where there is a shift in a dynamic in some sort of relationship here and you are letting something go to seek out your independence right, for something new, better times ahead for you. Um, and so this can be a job, this can be a relationship, whatever it is. And remember, we do have uh, 8,000 energy endings, new beginnings, okay, um, or things that are evolving in a positive way. So there's something here that is coming to an end, but there's new fresh energy and exciting energy coming in. The Page of Wands can be about doing something fun and exciting. It can also be about following your passion, your goals, your dreams. You do you, living your best life. It can also be where you are having a little bit more fun and spiciness and excitement in your life here with this as well. All right, so whatever your situation is, whatever cycle is coming to a close, whatever decisions that you're making, they are benefiting you right? Even if you are suffering a loss, that you are going to come out on top. There's your next message. I am honest with myself and others. Okay. So whatever your situation is, be open and honest with yourself and other people. The truth shall always set you free. The truth is sometimes painful to hear and painful to say, right? But it will always set you free. And your final message here, we've got replenish. The sun will rise and we will try again. There you go. All things must sometimes come to an end. And this isn't quite the traditional imagery on this particular card, but usually the Ten of Swords. We do have a guy lying on the ground. We've got swords stabbing him in the back. We can usually see the sun rising on the horizon. But we can sometimes look at that as the sun setting, but the sun will set and then it will rise again. So there's always the dawn of a brand new day tomorrow. 
I'll leave all that there for you guys. I hope there was something here for you. If so, please do hit that like button there. It does help my channel out, but it's free for you. Just hit the thumbs up. I thank you for that in advance. Um, if you enjoy my content, hit that notification bell with the subscribe button, and you should always get notified whenever I put up something new. But also, don't be afraid to join in or start a conversation down below as well. We're all in this eclipse energy together. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on, a lot of things coming out of the woodwork, a lot of um, weird happenings going going on and uh, we are all in the same pool so learn from each other and share your experiences you never know someone else might be going through the same thing and you might be able to help them or maybe you can get some help but I thank you for watching and I will see you guys later bye-bye so for you, Libra, this is occurring in your seventh astrological house, and this is a focus on partnerships. So all kinds of relationships here, friendships, romantic relationships, business partnerships as well. Some of you here could be meeting some new people, making some new connections. Uh, some of you here, you could be kind of getting things back on track and uh, getting things back to a harmonious state. Uh, that can be really quite wonderful for you. You may even, um, for some of you, be taking a relationship up to the next level, a new stage in your relationship. There could be surprise engagements coming in here, even faded meetings. If you are single, this can potentially represent some energy that opens the doors to new love. This seventh house energy also does have to do with uh, sharing, right? Sharing, um, sharing equal responsibility, financial responsibility, um, making sure that everybody is whole, uh, is pulling their weight in a relationship, right? And if it's not, then with the, uh, with the, um, uh, eclipse energy, you could potentially be doing something about it. Okay. It's like, nope, I think we're done with this. So you could be, uh, really kind of sorting something out there. The seventh house also has to do with contracts. And so some of you could be forging new contracts, right? So it can be a business contract. So say a job offer. Um, it can be that you are, uh, signing things like leases or loans, things like that. Um, but you could also, um, with your contracts here, be entering into a higher state of union with a person. So think of marriage contracts, or if maybe you're moving in with somebody and you're not necessarily getting married, um, this can be where you are kind of putting together like things like roommate agreements, um, you know, or like common law agreements, things like that, right? So this can all come about for you guys. So changes and potentially new exciting things in your relationships here for you. So we've got Scorpio energy and we've got breathe through the tension. And what do, what do some relationships bring? A little bit of tension. So with the Scorpio energy coming out here, this is saying that there's something shifting, something changing for you. You may have the ability to get them something back on track should people be willing to compromise and willing to um, be a little bit flexible with each other and honest and truthful for sure and maybe embrace a little bit of change. Um, but with this energy, this can be where something really does come to a climax because that's what eclipses do and especially in the Aries energy, the fiery energy. So if there's something that's been very much in an impasse, right, you could have something that kind of does blow up a little bit and it's probably necessary to really get everything out in the open to get the truths revealed and to uh, deal with something head on. But whatever it is for you, breathe, breathe, breathe through the tension, right? The um, lunar, lunar cycles when they are eclipses, I mean, lunar cycles, sometimes they can be a little bit, um, a little bit dramatic or emotional anyway. New moons are typically a little bit gentler, um, but when we have eclipses, it's like anything goes, expect the unexpected, um, things that are hidden can come to light, right? We can have all kinds of faded events that are going on and it can be a little bit stressful or it can be emotional um, or you could just be feeling a little bit hmm, out of sorts. So here in this energy, it's going to be really important for you to do a little bit of breath work, um, engage in some meditation, find a quiet space or connect with nature, something that just kind of makes you feel a little bit more in alignment with yourself, a little bit calmer and a little bit more grounded. It's going to be a really good way for you to navigate some of this energy. We've got the Queen of Cups coming in here for you. There's some love in the air. 
We've got the Seven of Wands, hmm, someone laying down boundaries, and we've got the Knight of Pentacles, potentially an offer coming your way. So with the Queen of Cups, right, we do have love. We've got an open heart here in this energy. We also have some very psychic and intuitive senses here as well. So let your intuition guide you because if you want to have an important conversation with someone, um, you know, timing is everything. And so your intuition will kind of say, okay, now is the time, right? And so we need to listen to that. Um, the Queen of Cups can also be this energy that you're embracing here where maybe your intuition is saying, you know, kind of giving you a little nudge out the door um, to go to a certain event, um, especially a social gathering or anything like that. Um, or maybe if you're single and you're doing some online dating, it's just something maybe compelling you to go somewhere to talk to some people, um, you know, or to accept some invitations. And even though maybe you don't want to, your intuition is nagging you and saying, yes, go, go, go. And there's a reason for that. So um, pay attention to your intuition. But the Queen of Cups does bring love and romance and connection, kindness and compassion um, to your situation. It can bring you a potential person here as well. So for some of you, you're meeting some new people. Okay, you're letting your guard down enough that you know you're you're no longer have walls built around your heart instead they're healthy boundaries and there might just be um, a person coming in that uh, you get talking to and you quite like but the queen of cups can also certainly represent some peace some forgiveness some calm being um, open-hearted being kind and gentle with people especially people um, and your situation and you have the potential here to get things back on track but with the seven of wands this does show that you are very much in a position of strength and you need to remember that because sometimes we need to turn and face the music. We need to turn around and face our issues head on. And that's what the seven of wands does. This might be where you advocate for yourself or you lay down those boundaries, right? You lay down kind of the, uh, the rules, so to speak, and you stick with them. So if you think of um, say a business partnership. And, you know, I know a few people that um, have a business partnership with someone else, right? Co-owners of a business. And they need to, they need to establish, reestablish and remind each other of their boundaries and responsibilities every once in a while. Um, because you do have kind of maybe one person that's really good at connections and social networking, um, drumming up business like a salesperson kind of thing, right? And then you might have the person on the back end that is kind of a little bit more um, a little bit better at like the business um, aspects of things, right? Like doing the paperwork and documentation and, you know, filing taxes and things like that. So, you know, but sometimes, you know, we do get a little bit um, out of whack in that. So we got to bring things back to center. Same thing in a personal relationship here as well, right? It's like, okay, you know, if we have some issues, we need to deal with some things and then we can move forward. But the Seven of Wands does show that you have the ability to overcome whatever relationship issues, struggles that you may have or that you have had, and you can move forward in a wonderful way. The Knight of Pentacles can certainly show one day at a time, one situation at a time, and deal with the issues, pay attention to details, you'll get to where you want to go. The Knight of Pentacles does quite often bring us something, and we can bring um, an apology, maybe. Uh, we can bring um, invitations for business connections, social events, um, can bring us possibly proposals, but maybe a little bit more on a practical level here um, with the Knight of Pentacles. So it's not necessarily, I mean, the Knight of Pentacles is not going to be a sweep you off your feet kind of energy, but there is love here. So this can be where, you know, maybe if you are in a romantic relationship here, instead of, you know, getting a marriage proposal, maybe you decide very practically to move in together, right? This can be that business partnership that may come up here as well. Um, you might be dealing with financial matters with a person in your life also. And this can be where maybe they pay you back, right? They might bring you something um, or you are uh, feeling like you are might be in a position to help someone out in this energy as well. But the Knight of Pentacles can certainly show that there could be something coming in here for you and it could be something very exciting. We have the dark energy here for you. 
Take a moment to sit under the star-speckled sky, listening to crickets and breathing in the cool night air. And there's where, where we've got that Scorpio energy, that breathe through the tension. <clears throat> there's changes or there's the need for a little bit of change and part of how we can navigate through some energy or really just kind of sit in a quiet space and figure out what it is we want. Um, then, you know, this can bring us a little bit of peace and calm when we find that quiet space. So that might be really important for you at this time. There's your next card. I seek truth and act upon my realizations. There you go. So figuring things out, bringing things out in the open, out of the woodwork. We deal with things. We carry forward. We make a decision and we move on. Done. That's how we get unstuck from things. So that's what I have for you, Libra. I hope you guys have a wonderful eclipse. I do thank you for watching. Um, and uh, I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. And for you, Scorpio, we do have this occurring in the sixth astrological house um, ruled by Mercury. So this retrograde can really have you taking a step back. And you might be lost in thought lost in some deep contemplation about things, um, but your mind can also be really sharp at this time. Um, you could be communicating a little bit better. Maybe you're reassessing and reevaluating situations in your life. The sixth house does have to do with your health, your happiness, your well-being, um, your physical well-being, your physical situation um, also has to do with like your daily routines and things. So you could be um, you could be in this uh, energy thinking, OK, it's the start of an astrological new year. I'm going to go to the doctor. I'm going to have a checkup. This can be where, you know, you're like, you know what, I want to be a little bit healthier um, and whatever your goal might happen to be, whether it's just for, to feel a little bit better or whether it's to lose some weight, whatever it happens to be, um, you might be considering um, making some changes to your diet in this energy just something where you know you don't have to have any kind of astronomical goal right it can be just you know what i'm going to replace the french fries with a salad twice a week and i'm just going to feel a little bit better about myself right um or i'm going to you know um normally i just walk my dog around the block maybe i'm going to set a time goal and we're going to stay out for at least half an hour or an hour right so you might just be making some small changes um, to things in your life and uh, but they could be big ones for some of you too. remember the little things that we do add up to the big things so sometimes in our human existence we do have set up these lofty goals and they seem like climbing a mountain and so we need to remember that when we bring things dial things back a little bit it's a, a lot more attainable and then we can have a lot more smaller wins so you could be doing things like that. Um, you could be uh, potentially doing something like starting a yoga class or something like that. But in this energy, you're switching up your daily routine in some way. OK, um, might be getting up a little bit earlier, not not hitting the snooze button, cutting back on the coffee. Uh, whatever it is here for you will have a positive impact on your health, happiness and well-being. You may be getting a new pet at this time as well because your sixth house has to do with pets so you could be it's a great time beginning of an astrological year to get your vet uh your pet of checkup at the vet there we go um that can be a good thing for both you and them um but you might be getting a little puppy or a kitten or maybe something a little bit more exotic a hamster for one of your children or something like that um but pets can um be front and center in some of this energy here as well but i do feel that this mercury retro grade is really going to open your eyes to something it's really going to have you doing some deep thinking at this and you're not just going to be sitting here thinking about something I think you're going to be doing something with whatever decisions that you're making internally or whatever information or clarity that you receive Attend to the details and we've got Virgo energy coming in here for you guys. This is slowing things down a little bit. Um, Virgo energy is not fast, uh, but it's slowing things down a little bit, paying attention to the little things, um, reflecting, um, reviewing things, double checking things, doing some extra due diligence and homework is all going to pay off for you here in this energy. So again, that Mercury retrograde is really inviting you to take a step back and open your eyes, open your 
mind, open your heart to things, and uh, kind of make sure that you are paying extra due care and attention to things in your life and asking all the right questions and seeking out better, more reliable sources of information as well. So you could be doing some research at this time. We've got the Three of Swords, the Moon, there you go, and we have the Magician. There you go. So the Three of Swords indicates there's something potentially not quite right in your world. Fortunately, we've got Chiron here to help us out with this energy. The Three of Swords, this can be sadness, depression. This could be something to do with your heart or your blood pressure, your circulation, that kind of thing. Um, this can be where, you know, maybe you feel that, you know what, I want my physical strength to be stronger. I need to make some changes, right? Where, um, you know, we're looking for new ways to improve our health and the three of swords can show that there is something here we need <clears throat> excuse me i'm sorry something here that we need to address so our physical emotional spiritual health right um whatever that happens to be for you and that three of swords shows that there's something that we need to address but with the moon energy here it could be something that's hidden or something that um, maybe you've been ignoring okay because the moon deals with some shadow energy and those things that are hidden. So with the magician here, you could be going to see some sort of, um, maybe not necessarily for some of you, maybe not necessarily a traditional um, doctor. Maybe you go and see like a naturopath or something like that, some sort of magical practitioner, perhaps this can be um, the, a great call for you with some spiritual energy here for you to get your, um, go for a Reiki session, things like that. A little bit of a spiritual healer might um, be the order of the day for some of you. But yes, there could be some underlying conditions here that you might already kind of intuitively know about. Your intuition is very much on point. And you know what? There's no time like the present to get things checked out. Um, but with that moon and the magician, oh man, you've got some magic here going on. Um, the magician has to do with your ability to create, your ability to get the resources that you need, um, and to kind of magically make things happen for yourself. You're very focused on something here and, or you're going to be making some changes where you do need to have a laser focus and you need to have um, just just get started and maybe put a little bit of a plan in place because you can change, you can create whatever it is that you want. Now, the magician and the moon, um, both of these energies coming in here and with this new moon, right, this eclipse energy, you could be getting something new. You could be number one, feeling a little bit better, feeling a little more, more lighthearted. There's some healing energy coming in here for you. Um, but you could also be manifesting something really exciting in your life as well. It can be something that benefits you in some way, but it can be something coming in. So you might get some resources that you need, or perhaps you do figure out, um, you know, how, you know, I'm not feeling like myself. How do I make my, myself feel better? And all of a sudden you might have find yourself in the right place at the right time. You could open up your cell phone and find like an ad for something that just kind of really clicks for you. And you're like, I want to do that, right? So a little bit of magic in the air for you guys. This is might be also a little bit emotional because we do have the moon. The moon can bring out emotions, okay? But this can really show that there is a cycle that needs to end for you with the three of swords and a new cycle beginning for you here with this magician. So with the moon energy, really connect with this moon. Find a quiet space. Um, connect with yourself. Do a little bit of meditation. Um, really kind of connect with your emotions and dig a little bit deep. See what is hidden, right? Um, because sometimes we have some underlying fears or insecurities and things like that that prevent us from moving forward. So you might be doing a little bit of an emotional deep dive at this moon, but I feel that you will probably find what it is that you're looking for or get the answers 
that you have been seeking. The moon does show that there might be an element of uh, fears or doubts and you're encouraged to face them and believe in your magic, believe in your power. Some of you could be having some very deep spiritual insights at this time. Don't forget that just a couple of days after this eclipse, we do have that Kazemi happening. So it could be a really big shift. For you coming in here, um, pay very close attention to any anything weird that you see, any signs, symbols, synchronicities that you see along your journey. They really do mean something. Your intuition is heightened. Your psychic abilities are heightened. It's going to be a great time for you to set some intentions to manifest some things into your life as well. So believe in your personal power. We have self-care. Hey, there you go. Spoil yourself in the moonlight. And of course, where this new moon is hitting self-care, there you go, your sixth house energy, health, happiness, well-being, what does that look like to you? There is your next message. I am ready for something bigger, better, and brighter. What a great a positive affirmation, and we'll put that right on top of your happy little magician. I'll leave that there for you, Scorpio. I hope there was something in here for you. If so, please do hit that like button. It's the thumbs up sign. It's free for you, but it really does help the video get out there. So I appreciate that. And uh, don't be afraid to uh, join in or start a conversation down below as well. We're all in all this energy together. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world and also astrologically here for us. And sometimes things feel a little bit scary or a little bit weird. So how are these eclipses evolving for you? Um, you know, if you're going through something strange, probably someone else is as well. So help and support and be kind to each other down in the comments section. But I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. So for you, Saggy, this is happening in your fifth astrological house. Now, this is actually kind of a really great place to have an eclipse. Um, again, this, uh, you know, this energy is very connected with the sun. The fifth house is ruled by the sun and this brings in, you know, um, some love and romance. It brings in a very playful, very creative energy. So some of you could be, uh, starting a new creative project. Some of you could be feeling a little bit more social and getting out there and meeting more people. Um, some of you could have, um, be opening the doors here, letting down your guard for a little bit of love and romance to waltz into your life. Oh, then watch out, and there could be some faded meetings and events going on for you there. Um, there could be if you're already in a part in a romantic partnership, this can be where there just might be a little bit more love and romance in the air around this time. Someone might be feeling a little bit passionate. At this time, maybe you come home uh, at the end of the day to find a nice romantic dinner laid out or, you know, you all of a sudden you and your partner decide, you know what, we're going to ship the kids off to grandma and grandpa's house and we're going to have a nice romantic weekend and we're not going to do much. Um, we're not going to spend a lot of money, but we're just going to enjoy each other. So, you know, you could have some really interesting stuff going on there. But the fifth house is everything that makes you happy essentially the things that speak to your heart um the things that are fun the things that are exciting in your life so you know this is a very creative energy and a very joyous energy here in this house now this can also bring in some drama okay sun energy and because we do have uh chiron coming in if there's been any kind of um you know family drama or anything like that or maybe even any kind of uh, heightened uh, sensitivities that have been going on in a romantic partnership here for you. This can be where you have the ability to heal that situation and then kind of have a little bit more of a lighthearted energy there for you. But yes, this can be kind of fun and exciting. And, you know, we already have kind of surprises that might be coming in for some of you. And for you guys, this could be something that puts a big smile on your face. We have Capricorn energy and take a reality check. All right. So this is an important um, message. And of course, we do have Mercury retrograde. And this is where we do take a step back. We reassess. We reevaluate things. Um, we make sure we're seeing the truth in all things. We make sure that we have the right information and that we are communicating in a positive way. Um, so in this energy, you are being very reminded to take a step back before taking a leap forward. 
right? Just make sure that you haven't missed any information or details. Make sure you've asked them right questions, right? You know, I mean, surprises can be good, but we don't want um, the surprises that come in because we've overlooked something and we're like, damn, now I got to do something again. So whatever your situation is, take reality check, take that step back, have a look at that big picture, and you might just get some answers that you're looking for uh, right around this eclipse energy. We've got the five of swords. Ha ha. All right. But we also have the sun. Now it shows up in reverse for the sun in this particular in this particular uh, reading here. Um, and the sun is one of those cards where even if it's in the reverse, it's still an incredibly positive card. We've got the nine of wands in reverse. So I feel like here that, you know, there's probably been a little bit of conflict, maybe some stress. Uh, you've probably um, had some challenges uh, in your world and this is where things are turning around for you. A little bit of a slower uh, turnaround for you here in this energy, but there is a healing energy coming in. There might be something hidden that you don't know and this can help you resolve some issues, resolve some differences. Um, with the sun coming in, even though it's in reverse, the sun is actually one of those cards where um, you know, different schools of thought. A lot of people don't read the sun in reverse at all. Um, I read the sun in reverse, but typically only as a slight delay or a little bit of a slowdown um, and something that we can recover from very quickly, still bringing in a lot of happiness, a lot of positivity, a lot of joy, a lot of creative energy, a lot of optimism, right? All kinds of wonderful abundance blossoming in your life. But it's usually where we need to deal with something. But if anything that we're dealing with, we're looking at through a different lens. We're looking at with a positive aspect, a positive vibe. Even if we put an end to something, it's for um, it's because it's going to make us happier um, if we let something go. This is having a clearer, more positive outlook on, you know, dealing with relationships and people and things like that. So in this energy, right, again, we're going to take the step back, have a look at the big picture, gain clarity with the sun and then propel ourselves forward in the direction that we want to go. So the sun really does trump any other energy. It shines a beautiful light on your reading. I love that the sun came out for you because considering we've got this eclipse in your fifth house, right? Um, this can be very exciting. And you know, the funny thing is, is with the sun coming out in reverse here is when we have the solar eclipse, um, the moon goes in front of the sun. So in that time, right there can be where you get some sort of major epiphany, or this can be where something does come out of the woodwork. For you that can help you to move forward. So um, very interesting energy coming in there for you. It can be reveal some past hurts um, or you could resolve some issues because the five of swords can bring about a victory kind of energy, but also like a double edged sword. Um, so it's like something really positive, but maybe someone else hurts. So think of, um, you know, a conversation or an argument that you might have with somebody here with the five of swords and someone's got to get the last dig in, they got to get the last word in. So there could be some healing element there. So apologies or clearing of the air from a conversation with the nine of wands, right? There can be an energy of skepticism there of, you know, we're not quite done with something we need to get done, but we're not quite done here. It can be one where we're just kind of a little bit of a standstill or an impasse. So I think with the sun coming in here that you you will clear the air with something, whether it's something internally within you or something that has to deal with other people. We're breaking down barriers, we're breaking down walls, we're um, embracing a more positive vibe, positive outlook, and this is moving you forward in a better direction or potentially giving you a fresh start and a fresh outlook and a fresh perspective. Take charge. Okay. Don't wait for the stars to align. Reach up and arrange them the way you want. All right. So sometimes we need to go for what we want, right? We need to take action. Um, Aries energy is I am, I am powerful. I'm strong. I'm successful. I am happy. Um, I am worthy, you know, whatever that happens to be for you. And in the, um, you know, in the eclipse energy here, which at the ruler of, of Aries is Mars, Mars is I act. 
right? I'm seizing the moment. I'm seizing the day. I'm acting upon my goals and my dreams. So if there's been anything that where there's been some procrastination here, I think that you're going to find a little bit of freedom um, to pursue some goals or hobbies or dreams or, um, you know, welcome in something new, something more exciting. So if there's been blocks, I think these blocks are being burned away with the sun. There's your next message. And we have, I am curious about my true nature. I seek to understand myself, right? Life is about a journey. Life is about figuring out who we are and why we're here. So you could be getting some very interesting answers there. And there's your next card. I teach people how to treat me. Always very important in that energy. We do forget that sometimes. So remember that, you know, if you are getting out meeting new people or if you're in a relationship or um, business, friendship, whatever it happens to be, you teach people how to treat you, right? Five of swords, right? So if you teach people that it's okay to get a last little verbal barb in a conversation somewhere, or if a simple conversation turns into like a heated argument or something like that, the nine of wands, what boundaries have you put in place, right? Have you put them in? Have you put boundaries in place and are they healthy or are you ignoring the boundaries that you set and letting someone break them down anyway, right? So this can be a really important time for you to positively reassess where you have put some boundaries and where you have, um, you know, kind of allowed people to step over that line in um, in your relationship. So can just be where you get a little bit of your mojo back here, Saggy. So we all kind of have a little bump in the road every once in a while. Anyways, I'm going to leave all that there. I hope there was something here for you. I thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a wonderful eclipse. Engage with this energy because it's very interesting energy that we've got going on. And remember, with, by the time we have the Kazemi on the 11th, right, we're still only a couple of days um, past that eclipse energy, and it's still going to be there. It's still going to be prevalent. So within those three days, there you could have something very interesting that comes up internally or externally. So I thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed your reading, please do hit that like button. But um, I will see you guys later. Bye. So for you, Capricorn, you could be very much centered and focused around your home at this time. Um, this eclipse is occurring in your fourth astrological house ruled by the moon, and it brings Cancerian energy. So nurturing your home, building a solid foundation with your where you live, with the people in your life, with your family, with your children. It's a very nurturing energy that comes in with this particular one. So um, you could be at this time doing a little bit of uh, boring spring cleaning. Um, perhaps you're looking at where you live and making some changes in that regard, buying a new house or moving to a new neighborhood, signing a lease, you know, those kinds of things. You could have some changes happening about who you live with. You could have um, one of your children coming back home right? Eclipses plus retrograde equals something coming back. Um, so maybe one of your children has been out in college or university or something, um, or they have, you know, embarked into the big wild world on their own. And now they're like, oh my God, I need help. It's really hard out here, which yes, it is. So they could be coming back home for some reason. Um, you could be experiencing some changes with one of your parents as well. Um, perhaps moving to a bigger house that you can have an in-law suite down below, especially if your parents are getting a little bit older. Uh, you could be moving in with a parent to take care of them, right? So it's a very caring, um, a very nurturing kind of energy here, all about your home and your private life. So a little change in there now with the eclipses. Okay, I do have to say that could be something very exciting um, and something very surprising or shocking. So, um, you know, there could be like a surprise pregnancy or a birth announcement or perhaps you're making a decision to start a family or add to your existing family as well. But this does deal with your private life. So um, it, since eclipses can sometimes reveal something, there could be some sort of revelation in your family unit as well. Perhaps you could be digging into your ancestry. Um, also, uh, maybe you need to know some of your family history for medical reasons, or maybe you're just curious about where you come from. So you could be ordering one of those DNA kits things um, that they do. I think genealogically, I'm not sure how they work, but 
You could be ordering one of those, or maybe you're doing something old school and uh, just putting together your family tree um, on your own. Or I think there's like Ancestry, ancestry Ancestry.com or something. I'm not sure how it works. I think a whole bunch of people have to be on it or something for it to work properly. I'm not sure. But anyways, but you could be digging into some family history at this time. Um, (laughs) And uh, I have to chuckle a little bit because this can be where you might dig up some family secret. All right. And it could be something really old. It could be, but it could be something really exciting or really enlightening. And you're like, wow, I didn't know that. And it's interesting how family secrets come up. And so focus on the positive. We've got new moon energy coming in here right for you. Now, this is bringing in a Sagittarian vibe. Sagittarian vibe is about the big picture, is about keeping an open mind and open hearts where we gain wisdom and insights and clarity on things here as well. Um, <clears throat> this is also focusing on freedom moving forward, following a passion, a goal, or a dream, and making something happen for yourself, right? And it's an expansion energy here. So focus on the positive. Where do you want to go? If you're not where you want to be right now, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? What do you want to change? What is your um, desired outcome for something? If you're met with some sort of bump in the road, right? What, where do you see something changing and evolving to get you to that state where you're going to be happy and pleased with, you know, things that are going on around you? And again, we do have some family stuff coming up here. We do have some stuff around your home, right? So, you know, maybe you're in a situation where you discover that your pipe has burst or something like that. Well, you can sit there and, you know, cry in a pool of water or you can do something about it. Right. Um, So sometimes we need to kind of dig a little bit deep um, there for, you know, to really see the positive out of a negative or to turn a negative into a positive. So whatever your situation is, focus on the positive, because wherever we focus our energy and our attention, that is what is going to expand, grow and manifest in our lives. So whatever your situation is, focus on the positive. Oh, hello. We have the tower coming in here for you guys. Explosive. Got the Empress. And we have the Devil in Reverse. Okay. So if we're ever going to get the, wow, look at your energy. Jeepers. Okay. Um, whew, this is a big one. So we have uh, three cards, three major arcana, faded events going on here, surprises, unexpected changes. And let me tell you, we've got the Tower, we've got the Empress. Okay, this can be a surprise pregnancy, a surprise engagement, um, something revealing, something shocking can come in here for you here with this. But with the devil energy in reverse, you know, if you're ever going to get the devil, it's going to be, you know, you want it in either a blessings position or in the reverse, right? So this can be where something that someone has been obsessing over, finally, they get some movement, some traction. Um, This can be where, you know, you might have um, an opportunity that comes up to leave a controlling or a negative situation. We're breaking change. We're breaking um, bonds here with this devil in reverse. We're seeing things clearly. We're seeing the truth of things. And we are taking back control because the devil um, in the upright represents number one, um, our fears, our doubts, our worries, our insecurities, right? The things that live in our shadow. The devil also represents the things that tempt us, our bad habits and patterns and behaviors that have, you know, that, you know, we may try sometimes to change, but ultimately feel that we can't or we feel a lack of willpower. So where there's a lack of willpower, you're gaining your power. Where there is a bad habit, you're turning it into a good habit. Um, Where there has been something that you've been obsessed over, there's a release of that coming in here. So with that devil card, you could be letting someone go, letting something go, or you are seeing why something has previously happened um, in your life. And now you're seeing the positive aspects of it. And you could be experiencing some wisdom there in that. Okay. Um, you could also be uh, in this energy, um, really uh, making some positive changes in your home life, in your relationships, all kinds of things, because that devil does kind of keep us a little bit tied down. Um, sometimes there and I feel like here you might be recognizing where you need to change or where you have been going around in circles and repeating the same things 
over and over again. So you're taking back your mojo, you're making change, you're letting something go, and you're becoming a little bit more open-minded, a little bit more creative. Now, there could be a catalyst moment coming in here. You, my friends, are the only sign so far to get the tower. <clears throat> Now, the tower is Mars energy. And what season are we in? Aries season. Who is the ruler of Aries? Mars. So in this energy, really expect the unexpected. The tower always comes in for our best and highest good. But our the tower card comes in quite often as some information, an epiphany, a revelation, some clarity that can kind of rock our world a little bit or get us unstuck. All right, the tower is where something needs to be destroyed or needs to be released so that we can make space for something better to come in or make space for something a little bit more in alignment with who we are and what we want, some better vibes and better times ahead. This can be where, you know, we do have a catalyst moment for change. The tower brings sudden unexpected news events or change in your life. Sometimes the tower card, when we get some information, it feels like the end of the world. Okay, it quite often isn't, but it feels that way. It's something, think about some, you know, if you were to discover something, right? The devil card, maybe you, if you are um, dig, dig, digging deep into your ancestry, maybe you do discover something that, you know, it's like, oh, that's quite scandalous. Um, you know, it's not going to affect you necessarily in your modern present day because no one cares anymore because it was like, you know, a hundred years ago, but it could be that revelation that you find and you're like, oh man, uh, it's quite unexpected, right? Um, but there can be some exciting things that happen with the tower card here as well. So again, surprise, and sorry, revelation. Uh, something exciting, some really good news, right? The tower isn't always negative. It does just bring in something that we didn't quite expect. But ultimately, our intuition often already showed us that there's something going on. We have singularity coming in here. You are your own sun, moon, and stars, all right? Believe in yourself. Uh, embrace your own personal power, okay? Um, remember, you, okay, are important as well in some of this energy. Take care of your own self and do what is right for you. But remember how powerful and strong you are. And there is your final message. I seek balance and grounding. Okay, very going to be very important at this moon, especially with all this heavy hitter energy that you've got coming out here. Okay, finding ground, a grounding, protecting your energy. Um, the Empress connect with nature can be really positive for you, um, but this can be a time of growth and expansion for you. And as we do grow and expand and find new opportunities, right, we do quite often have to embrace some change. But the tower, remember, comes in when we're stuck and now we're getting unstuck. So very interesting energy there for you guys. All right. So expect the unexpected ground and protect your energy and uh, embrace the power of this eclipse. So I thank you guys for watching. I hope there was something here for you. If so, please do like, share, and subscribe. Um, one more thing, make sure that you do know that this energy is not necessarily just going to happen right on eclipse day, okay? It's going to be something that does unfold through time, especially with the power of these energies, all right? So I hope you guys have a wonderful eclipse, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. And for you, Aquarius, we do have this eclipse happening in your third astrological house. Now, this is ruled by Mercury. So this retrograde is likely going to uh, reveal something to you. And especially uh, when it's, you know, uh, layered with this solar eclipse, right? So there could be some surprise epiphanies, revelations. Um, you could be, if you've been looking for some clarity or for some answers, this might be where you get it. Um, if you have been waiting for some messages, okay, um, look in unexpected places. Um, so if you've been expecting an email or anything like that, um, make sure you are checking your spam folders and things because um, things uh, might go missing sometimes. But your third house has to do with your communication, your thinking, your technology. Okay, Very, very Mercury energy. OK, um, also has to do with short trips. Some of you might be making some plans to go on a short little getaway, um, maybe with some friends or some family or maybe even just yourself. The third house also has to do with 
your neighborhood, where you live, um, your social life, who you engage with, right? And also your perception um, around the world. So you could be getting clarity insights, you could be meeting new people, you could be going on new adventures. The third house in astrology is a little bit like that junk drawer that we all have, and you just never know what you're going to find in there. And this can be what this brings to you. So um, there could be something interesting you find on the internet. You could um, have someone that reaches out to you um, via like social media or something like that. Maybe someone you haven't seen for a while. You could discover financial money making opportunities, right? Or maybe you find a screaming um, travel deal or something. So we can have some exciting things going on in our third house. But um, really pay attention to this Mercury retrograde, okay? Um, because I do think that uh, this will be maybe changing how you communicate or there could be some um, very interesting um, conversations that may happen around this time. All right, keep an open heart and open mind. You usually do, um, but uh, sometimes we just need that little bit of a reminder. So let's see, we have Aries energy, cool your emotions, okay? Mm, yes, and where we do have Mercury retrograde layered on top of that, there could be some potentially heated conversations that come in here. And even though you're probably right about something, Aquarius, okay, you're one of those people, you know a lot of things, uh, you know a little bit about a lot of subjects, right? And even if you're right about something, cool your emotions, okay? Know when to pour some water on that and to walk away, okay, or to let something go even if there's something that you feel really passionate about sometimes we just need to give a little internal eye roll shake our head and say okay I'll talk to you later and just go about our merry day this can um, be a moon where maybe you are feeling a little bit emotional it happens Aquarius okay and um you know, because usually the new moon is a little bit gentler, right? But we are in eclipse season. We're still feeling the after effects, the hangover of the um, of the full moon, uh, the lunar eclipse that we had um, on the 25th of March. So there could be something here where you're just feeling a little bit emotionally charged. So how do we cool our emotions? Number one, walk away. <laughs> okay. Number two, Take a step back, reassess, reevaluate the situation, keep an open heart, keep an open mind. Um, you can always go and connect with nature as well, right? So, you know, if there's like an argument or a discussion that's getting a little bit out of hand, or if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed or anything like that at some point, the best thing you can do sometimes is go outside and go for a walk. Go for a walk, connect with nature. Look at the scar, look at the stars, look at the clouds, right? And this way you feel more grounded and more at one with the universe, okay? So there could be something here that is really exciting as well, okay? Now, um, just because we have emotions doesn't have to be negative, but there could be something going on that you're really excited about, okay? Or you could be getting some really good news at this time, but this is just that reminder just to kind of cool your heels a little bit here because. There could be other people around you that are maybe not in as good of a place as you are. And so it's just a little bit of awareness of, um, you know, other people's situations as well. So even though it might be something that you want to like jump for joy about and run screaming around the room and, you know, say, yes, I did it or yes, I've got this right. Um, or I'm so excited about this. Right. So other people and number one, it might be annoying, but other people might not necessarily be in that same energetic space that you are. So just kind of like keep things not necessarily on the down low or anything like that, but just um, don't overdo uh, your excitement. OK, just read the room, Aquarius, read the room. OK, <clears throat> we've got temperance here for you. Lovely. Queen of Wands. A lot of fiery energy here for you guys and the Knight of Pentacles. There's your cool yourself down. Okay, so the Temperance card here brings in Sagittarian energy, fiery energy. We've got the Queen of Wands, fiery energy. We've got this first card, Aries energy, fiery energy, 
Ooh, okay. Um, but then we've got the Knight of Pentacles to come in and put a little bit of a damper on the party. So <laughs> Knight of Pentacles is a really good card, but it's just earth energy and it is slow moving. So um, this is where we kind of calm down just a little bit. All right. But the Temperance card can bring you some spiritual guidance, quite often a guardian angel card coming in here, um, someone looking over your shoulder and guiding you. Um, the Temperance card is also one of alchemy, spiritual alchemy per se. So some of you could um, you know, spirit can be saying to you here with some of this energy that, you know, we're trying to give you a message. We're trying to give you some clear signs or some clarity on something. Again, that mercury energy, right, can very much kind of help us um, to open our mind a little bit and, and to recognize some signs that we might be seeing. So pay attention to some of the uh, some of the more mysterious energies that may be around you temperance card, right? This alchemy is that if you've been trying to create something, if you've been trying to get something off the ground, or if you've been trying to manifest things into your life, this is saying to you, stay open, stay receptive, one day at a time, I'm working on it, right? So there could be something very positive and very wonderful that you have been manifesting in your life that is coming in. It's just that you are being asked to be a little bit patient, okay? Um, but yes, you can have something coming to fruition for you at this time. So just assess your own personal situation. But the temperance card does bring in calm and patience, brings in sense, sense of healing of things coming together and um, bringing balance and harmony in your life. So at one day at a time, everything in moderation, connect with your angels, spirits, and guides does bring in a healing element to something here as well. So again, you could be working through some emotions, but you've got this um, healing that is right here on the sidelines. So <clears throat> excuse me, open your heart in this energy. But we do also have the Queen of Wands. And the Queen of Wands can be your energy. So again, this can be something that you're really excited about. The Queen of Wands has a sense of adventure. And again, through third house energy, we could be going on a trip or making some travel plans. Temperance card is Sagittarian energy. So maybe you have a Sagittarian friend um, or uh, acquaintance or whatever that uh, you might want to go on some sort of adventure with. The Knight of Pentacles, you're paying your money and you're both um, going uh, going out and having a good time. This can also be something you're planning for for the future with the Knight of Pentacles, something that is, you know, your, um, you know, you're counting down the days until you get to go. Um, so it might not necessarily be like right here. It could be like a couple of weeks or a couple of months down the road, but you are very excited that you get to make these plans. So you probably have to fork out a little bit of money or pay some deposits um, on time, um, right, uh, right about now, right, just to secure your spot. Um, but the Queen of Wands can be you, your energy, your um, feeling good about yourself, you're excited about things, maybe there's a passion project that you want to pursue, maybe you're feeling a little bit more inspired and creative at this time. Um, but uh, it is kind of a very exciting energy. But yes, with a sense of openness and adventures, a lot of fiery energy going on here for you guys. Queen of Wands can also quite often come out as a best friend. Right. So maybe you're healing something with a friend, um, healing something with a business colleague here, perhaps as well. All right. And you're getting things back on track. This can also be you um, finding a balance in a relationship or within yourself um, between that fiery, passionate, excited, let's get her done side and the calm, cool, collected side of this Knight of Pentacles. Like, calm down. We're going to get to where we need to get to, but we don't want to rush into anything because we don't want to miss any details. And so this can be something that kind of you find that healthy balance between action and um, uh, and paying attention to the details and you know, kind of taking your time to get something done so that you can guarantee your success. But the Knight of Pentacles can bring you offers, opportunities, some money, job prospects. Um, you could be paying some money to get something that you want, but you could also have something coming in. The Knight of Pentacles is also a reminder about patience and about paying attention, right? Knight of Pentacles always pays attention to the details. Okay, and again, we've got Mercury retrograde. So you're already being asked to take a step back and look at the details or reassess and reevaluate things anyway. Okay, and this is a double dose, a reminder of that. But there can be something very exciting brewing for you guys here. We have attract. Hey, look at that. Like the moon and the ocean, you attract good things into your life. All right, live it, learn it, love it, embrace it. Okay, um, we also have here your final message. I am open and responsive to the abundance of the universe. 
All right. Look at that energy. Okay. Alchemy. That's you. All right. So uh, I'm going to leave that there for you, Aquarius. I hope there was something here for you. It looks pretty, it looks pretty exciting. Okay. Um, a lot of doors opening, doors opening for you and a little bit of fun, I think, in your horizon here as well. But if you enjoyed your reading, please do take a moment and press that thumbs up button. Give me a like there on this video. It really does help it get seen. But also don't be afraid to start or join into a conversation in the comment section down below as well. We're all in this energy together. We all have some ups and downs. We all have some positive things. We all have some challenging things. Um, and, you know, a lot of people are feeling a little bit discombobulated. And of course, you are quite often uh, a little bit of a trailblazer, a little bit of a healer and um one of the uh, one of the people that is meant to guide and lead others, whether you fall into it or pursue it purposely. Um, so, you know, maybe someone can learn some things from you. So anyways, I hope there was something here. I thank you for watching and I'll see you later. Bye. And for you here, Pisces, we're probably going to be focusing a little bit on your money. Um, this eclipse is happening in your second astrological house ruled by Venus. Excellent. And ruled um, in its Taurus energy. So this is about your um, material things, the things you own, the things you possess, the things you buy, what you spend your money on. This does have to do with your um, work income. So how you make your money, how you invest your money. And with the new moon, you could have some new investment opportunities. You can have some new career um, opportunities opening up for you. Or maybe you just have a little bit of luck on your side and you got a little bit of money coming your way from something that you have done or something that you've worked hard for. Or maybe you just have a little bit of luck. So this also does have to do um, with your property. So the things you own like where or where you live. Um, so some of you here, because it's the new moon energy and because we are in the spring, you could be doing some decluttering. And as you declutter or if let's say you want a new couch, maybe instead of uh, donating your couch, you're going to sell your couch. Right. And so, you know, you don't have to spend as much money. You may have some um uh, expensive possessions that especially if you've been going through a few little ups and downs with your finances, if you've got a couple of things that are worth a little bit of money, you might be selling them at this time, um, bring you in some new money to do something that you want to do with, right? Um, you could be doing that, but you could also be buying something that you want as well. The second house also has to do with your value or your values. Okay, so this is about your self-esteem, your self-worth, and what it's tied to. And it's very interesting with the second house energy because sometimes, especially with social media and things like that, our self-esteem, our self-worth tends to sometimes, not for everybody by any stretch of the imagination, but we see it all the time, is, you know, is, are, is your personal self-esteem and value tied to what you own and what you possess? And this is not anything new. This started probably right around the Victorian age, somewhere in there when we started to turn our houses into homes and things that we're proud of, right? And we started to decorate our homes and things like that. And all of a sudden, you know, we come out of uh, eras where our home was just somewhere to put a roof over our head, right? We come out of those eras where all of a sudden our, our self-worth is tied to you know, our houses, our homes, what things look like, how they're decorated, all these kind of things. So you could be reassessing something there um, in your world with your second house energy, right? What is your self-esteem tied to? So very interesting energy, a little bit of deep thoughts, a deep respect, deep uh, introspection there. Um, but we do have this rule by Venus. So you could have a new beginning, a fresh start. You could be feeling really creative, but you could also be finding the resources that you need um, right when you need them. We have Taurus. Hey, look at that Taurus energy release control. <clears throat> go with the flow. Let something go. Be willing to try new things. Be willing to evolve and change. Right. When we try and control things too much, we tend to create blocks and obstacles. And we're not going to do that today. No, sorry, Bob, we are not. All right. We're going to release control. We're going to be in the flow. We're going to be receptive and open, but we're also going to be ready for some action. 
We have the fool. There you go. Okay. That's awesome energy there for you. The seven of pentacles <clears throat> and the hierophant. There's that Taurus energy again. So Taurus energy is really important for you at this time. This is going to be a very impactful eclipse for you on some level. And remember, things may happen quite quickly within a few weeks. Things may take a few months to play out for you. This is a very long lasting eclipse that's going to be re-triggered a number of times throughout the year. So this Taurus energy ruled by Venus, it's not a bad thing for you guys, right? Because you can, maybe you are feeling quite creative, or maybe you are feeling like, you know, things are starting to come together for you. Um, the Venus rules the Empress card, right? And this is where things come to fruition for us. This is where we take care of ourselves and our worth. Um, and, you know, maybe where you might reassess or have a look at the things that you do possess or own. Um, but this can also be that energy of new beginnings and a fresh start and doing what we want and having the resources or discovering the resources that we need when we need them. But we do have the Fool card, so jumping and leaping right into something here. The Fool brings a sense of adventure, new beginnings, a fresh start, or the next level of something. Okay, with the Seven of Pentacles here and the Hierophant, some of you could be um, discovering a little bit of financial freedom. And this may be because of a personal relationship. The Hierophant, right, can be, it's quite often the marriage card, right, or a higher level of commitment. So some of you could be having some career progress here. You could be having some investment coming to fruition. Very interesting that we do get the seven of pentacles because this is about assessing things. Um, uh, it can be about where, you know, something has come to fruition for you. And now you're contemplating, you know, this person standing under this tree, there's all these pentacles that have grown in the tree. She's standing there with a basket, but she's like, Hmm, do I take my pentacles off of this tree or are they going to get bigger? Can they still grow into the 10 of pentacles? So this is an energy of assessing things that you own, assessing your investments, assessing your money situation. And, you know, am I in the right place? Am I making the right moves? Um, are my investments paying off? Is there more room for growth? Or do I need to try something new? Do I need to set, take something to the next level? Um, is this an opportunity for me to cash out? and move somewhere a little bit different. So the seven of pentacles can be that you've been patiently waiting for something and now there's something here and you're just going to, um, you know, in that fool energy, you're going to trust yourself to make the right decisions and to uh, take that leap forward. Um, you believe in yourself and you have faith in yourself with the hierophant there, okay? Um, and you're just trusting in the process. You're trusting in things is very exciting. So um, some very exciting things going on for some of you here, um, especially with your money or your ability to make it, okay? Um, but this seven of pentacles is also one of strategy, right? So your strategy may pay off for you what you've been doing so far, but you could also be assessing your situation and putting a new financial strategy in place, okay, that will um, enable you in the future, uh, maybe for or early retirement, or, you know, you're saving up for the future, so you don't have to worry um, in your old age, that kind of thing, right? Or you're if you're looking for some career growth, so you can make some more money, you're laying the groundwork for that as well. But the fool says, jump right in. <clears throat> Sometimes we hold on to things a little bit too tight. The fool does not. The fool releases. The fool lets go. The fool says, let's go. Pitter patter. Let's get at her. Let's just take that first step um, towards our future. Do we know where we're going to go? No. Do we know what's, what's going to happen? No, but I'm trusting myself that I'm making the right decision. Um, Uranus rules the fool card. And later on in April, on the 20th, we do have a conjunction, and this is very interesting. This might be very impactful, impactful for you. We have a conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus, and it's in the sign of Taurus. So something here really wonderful is being activated for you guys. So very interesting energy. Okay. Um, Jupiter likes to bring us something. Jupiter is, of course, our benefit, most beneficial planet. Expansion, growth, good luck, good fortune, um, abundance in our lives, but also wisdom. Um, 
and uh, big picture thinking, right? So all of these things, Uranus rules the fool card and Uranus is also the ruler of Aquarius. Uranus is uh, the key word for Uranus energy is I evolve. Brings us change, inventions, um, rebellion, okay? Um, liberates us from things that have been holding us back. And it really does represent the future. So taking big, bold financial steps in your future and believing that you're making the right choices, the right decisions. Maybe you're looking to park your money in something for the long term and this will pay off for you. Some of you could also have some longer term um, personal commitments here with the Hierophant where you are um, pooling your money together right? And you can um, make it grow a little bit faster um, because now you've got extra resources there, right? So, but you do have a big, big Taurus energy. So I feel like this eclipse is lining up for you for some very powerful energies that are coming in there with that Jupiter Uranus conjunction. Um, and that's not going to be a one day event that's going to evolve, right? So this can be really important times for you guys for some very good and very positive financial changes. So whether you jump into a new job, whether you find an, a perfect investment or whether you've got some personal situation, you're learning, you're growing, you're evolving. All right. And you are taking something next level. Lovely. We have a dream here for you. Wish upon a star. Yes, indeed. Wish upon a star. What do you want? Where do you see yourself going? Set your intentions, set your goals, set your dreams. Okay, and then be ready for action. Don't try and control the outcome of things, though. Go with the flow. And there's your final message. Life is conspiring for me. Yes, it is. Life is never happening to you. When we embrace the energy that life is happening to us, we play the victim. And we, it's like we have no, no say, no role in anything that happens in our life. Whereas, whereas life is conspiring for me, everything is happening for your best and highest good. Everything is happening for you, even the difficult things. Because they bring us wisdom and growth and experience. And this builds us a good, strong, solid foundation. Lays the groundwork for success, right? We learn more from the difficulties that we experience than we do if everything was all hunky-dory, peachy keen, 24 hours a day. We would never recognize when something is extra wonderful, right? So life is always conspiring for you. I'll leave that there for you guys. Um, some very interesting and some potentially very exciting things going on here for you. But I hope there was something here for you. If so, please do hit that like button there, that thumbs up. It's free for you, but it does help me. I truly thank you for that. Um, subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content. But don't be afraid to jump into a conversation down below or even start one. We're all in this crazy energy together. Um, a lot of people are, some people are just like, oh yeah, I got this. I'm loving this energy. Other people, they're like, oh my God, I'm afraid. I don't know what's happening. Um, all these weird things keep happening around me. So collectively join as a group and uh, see what's going on. Share your experiences. We can all learn from each other. But I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.